This is New York City. Despite being just under the average size of a US city, 2.6% of the entire population of the US lives here, or in simpler terms, 8.8 .8 million people. It's by far the most populated city in America, with over twice the amount of people as the next largest, Los Angeles. This means, of course, that one, it's extremely crowded. And if you don't believe me, go check what a one-bedroom apartment goes for over there. And two, it's extremely powerful. The city has been like this for a long time. I mean, New York City, or NYC for short, has been the most populated city since 1790, which is basically the entire timeline of the United States, as well as the most powerful one for about two centuries now. But the thing is, it didn't start this way. To understand how NYC not only gained this dominance, but also sustained it throughout time, we need to go quite a bit back into history, even before the US was founded. Back in 1624, New York City was initially colonized by the Dutch West India Company after being granted permission by their government. The purpose was of course to expand the Dutch colonial empire and all that, but as for why they chose this specific location? Well, its location meant incredible potential. Let me explain. It's no surprise that prosperous cities are often located near large bodies of water. Water is the cheapest way to move goods, and was even more so before the Industrial Revolution. Access to navigable water meant food and raw materials could be easily brought to market and goods manufactured in the city could be cheaply exported. Not only did New York fulfill this requirement, but they did it in a special way. And that is because of New York Harbor. It's one of the largest and longest standing natural harbors in the world, with a set of three unique qualities that set it apart from every other one. The first being that the mouth of the Hudson River is located in between the surrounding lands of Staten Island, Brooklyn, and New Jersey, so it gets natural protection from them acting as a buffer, providing shelter from storm surges and enemy attacks, as well as being perfectly integrated. The second is that the natural shape of the harbor being like an upside-down triangle with a curved coastline also helps to disperse wind and wave energy, further reducing any risks. The third and final being the relatively shallow waters of the harbor make it difficult for large waves to form, providing additional protection from storms. These three qualities were ideal for the Dutch, who ended up renaming it New Amsterdam, with its closeness to Europe and the Atlantic Ocean proving invaluable. Remember too that the Dutch Empire at this time was at its peak. I mean, it was literally their golden age. And to be called the new version of their capital pretty much sums up its value. By the time the US became independent from Britain, New York was already their commercial capital, being to this day the busiest port on the east coast of North America. Despite all of this though, New York City hasn't always been the most powerful city in America. That actually belonged to Philadelphia. As the nation's largest city and acting capital during the last decade of the 18th century, it would become the location for the nation's first federally chartered national bank, the second bank of the United States, and the nation's first stock exchange. So for a time, it was that city and not NYC that stood as the pillar of the American financial world. Even as late as 1815, London banks looked to Philadelphia rather than New York to buy American securities. But this is where the turning point began. With NYC realizing the dominance of Philadelphia's security exchange market, they decided to formalize its exchange by establishing the New York Stock and Exchange Board in 1817. By this time, New York had already surpassed Philadelphia as the nation's leader in commercial trade, overtaking Philadelphia in the value of imports in 1796 and in the value of exports in the following year. This led them to becoming closer to equal power, at least until the Erie Canal was completed in 1825. That's when things changed forever. It was the first canal to directly link the Great Lakes and Mississippi River to the Atlantic Ocean, which diverted significant amounts of traffic from Montreal and reduced the cost of transporting goods from the east to the west, sometimes up to 90%. This gave the city an instantly huge economic boom, which made it incredibly wealthy, and let's just say, Philadelphia has never been close ever since. Not only was New York City a central location for European merchants, but its ports were much more convenient than Philadelphia's. Being deeper, the Hudson River proved to be much more navigable and much less prone to freezing over than the Delaware River. Also, since New York's ports proved to be the first port of entry for many immigrants, it became a convenient place for them to settle, helping stimulate an unstoppable rise in the city's population that would grow to be from originally 10% larger than Philadelphia's in 1820 to almost twice as large by 1860. These new immigrants brought with them not only a source of labor, but a more adventurous, risk-taking spirit compared to the more cautious nature of Philadelphia's Quaker heritage. As a result, New York City quickly developed a reputation for being a city of innovative business enterprise with an entrepreneurial spirit, further increasing economic activity. 
By the 1830s, having become the nation's most dominant commercial center, NYC basically solidified itself as the most powerful city in America, further proved by the Second Bank of the United States Charter failing to be renewed in 1836. By the mid-1800s, New York's port handled more goods and people than all the other American ports combined. In fact, it was, and is, so powerful that in 1861, Mayor Fernando Wood suggested it become a free city rather than fight against the South because it was too important economically to risk being caught up in the Civil War. This importance that NYC has is a similar formula to basically everywhere else too. When a river with access to the interior meets a natural harbor and access to a large ocean, you get a megacity trading hub, like London and Tokyo too. Though, just like these cities, there was of course more to do with it than just this, but it seems like it's usually a prerequisite. There are also capital cities, while New York City isn't. I mean, it technically was the capital for a short period from 1785 to 1790, with even the first presidential inauguration of George Washington being there. But you can't say this boosted it incredibly. Rather, it did get one though, from the founder effect, being one of the original colonies of the country. New York City also has a pretty diverse terrain. I mean, it's mostly relatively flat, which helped make it easier to build infrastructure such as transportation, roads, sewage, and buildings. But at the same time, there are some parts which are quite hilly, which provide scenic views and enhanced air circulation. It has a combination of the best of both worlds topography-wise. All of these things has resulted in New York City becoming the most powerful city not just in America, but on Earth overall. By 1920, more than 25% of the 300 largest corporations were headquartered here. Also, all the immigrants that came to NYC from the past due to its location helped establish the city as the cultural capital of America as well, with music, art, fashion, museums, and more, given its melting pot demographics. So, when you combine the fact that New York City is not only the financial capital of the world, but also the cultural capital of it, you get a very large population. There's tons of high-income workers, like engineers, bankers, and scientists working there for these companies, while at the same time many entertainers, like artists and actors, are there trying to break into the entertainment industry. Then there's of course people just moving there to be in the middle of it all and experience the big city. So when you combine this with its large immigrant population due to its location and the original people there, you get by far the most populated city in America, with almost 5 million more people than the next largest, Los Angeles. And remember, in terms of land area, NYC isn't special or anything. It's all on just 303 square miles of land. The average size of a US city is 355 square miles for comparison. So, it's also by far the most crowded city in the US, with around 28,000 people per square mile. To put this into perspective, the next most crowded, again LA, is only at around 8,500 people per square mile. So, if you're wondering why an apartment that literally looks like a shoebox is going for around $4,000 a month, this is why. The demand to live there is just too crazy. But who knows, maybe one day NYC will be affordable and spacious to live in. Just kidding. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. I'll see you in the next video.